Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me for my SIBO Freedom webinar. I am super passionate about my topic, as you'll see why coming up. So any questions that you have, just maybe write them down and then I've got some already that people sent through and then we'll get to them at the end. Okay, so, ooh, that's not a good thing. <laughs> okay, so welcome. In the next hour, this is what we're gonna be going through and this is what we're gonna be learning. So, we're gonna learn what is SIBO, because I talk about it all the time, but not everybody knows what it is. We're gonna talk about how to test for SIBO, the treatment options for SIBO, which diet is best for treatment uh, for SIBO, because there's so much information out there. And I know when I was going through it, it was so overwhelming, like who to listen to, what to eat, what not to eat, that sort of stuff. Gut restoration and the microbiome. Oh, I need to start restreaming. Hopefully, I'll go away. What is a SIBO freedom? Life after SIBO, and then how to stop SIBO coming back. So let's start with who I am. So my name is Kirsten, and I work as a naturopath, a herbalist, and a nutritionist. And I help people fix their digestion, specifically SIBO. So. Um, the digestive system, I, I get so nerdy about it. I absolutely love it. It's really, really cool when you can figure out what's going on. I personally, I love surfing. It's my happy place. I surf most days. I live in Bali most of the time, travel here and there. I am also a yogi. I used to be a yoga instructor in a past life a couple of years ago, but now I prefer being a student. I'm also a foodie. I love cooking. And I'm a mum to my beautiful golden retriever named Buddha. If you check out my Insta stories, you'll see him all the time. He's amazing. <laughs> so why I do what I do? Because I know what it feels like. So I feel like the universe kind of helped me out with my calling. So I work as a naturopath. I absolutely love it. I get so much joy from it. And before I started studying to be a naturopath, I didn't even know what a naturopath was. I didn't even know what organic meant. I had to go home and Google it. <laughs> but I was drawn there from a desire to feel better than I did. So most of my life I had digestive issues. But because not that many people talk about it, I didn't know that it wasn't normal. So an example, I was chronically constipated. But because no one talks about it, I didn't know it wasn't normal to only have a bowel motion two or three times a week. And then I would get bloated after, after eating. And then I just thought that's how it was. You put food in, your tummy puffs out, which can happen like a little bit, like you can get a little bit of food and then it's going to grow. But I looked pregnant every single time. And I just felt that for all the effort that I was doing, like eating right, exercising, doing all the right things, but I just still felt a little bit crap. So I was drawn to become a naturopath. And then back in 2016, I got diagnosed with SIBO. Before that, I knew like a little bit about it. I thought, okay, we'll just follow the FODMAP diet and you'll be fine. It's not that simple. It's a lot more complex and it's so frustrating. And all the information out there is super overwhelming. So even me with my naturopathic knowledge, when I got this diagnosis, I was so freaked out. So now, this is why I do what I do. So I share all the information to help take the overwhelm out of SIBO treatment. And it, it doesn't have to be hard. It can even be a bit enjoyable. So I love it. Okay. So firstly, just in case um, someone's joining that doesn't quite know what it is. So what is a SIBO? So SIBO is an acronym that stands for Small Intestinal Bacterial Overgrowth. So ideally, our small intestine should be relatively sterile, and then we want these bacteria in the large intestine. So it's an overgrowth of bacteria in your small intestine. It's not always bad bacteria as well. Sometimes it's just the bacteria, most of the time, it's the bacteria that's come from the large intestine, swam up a little bit and got where it's not meant to be. So this is SIBO. The most common symptoms of SIBO, so common. This is me. So this is me just before I got my diagnosis of SIBO in 2016. Then these pictures, so the one on the left is the one at nighttime. And then the one in the right is me in the next morning. And my body weight would change kilos overnight. So between these two photos is four kilograms, which is 8.8 .8 pounds. 
So that's not me being fat. That's my body. That, that was my body holding onto water as a result of inflammation. So the classic symptom for SIBO is the bloating one to three hours after eating. If it's longer than that, then it's probably in the large intestine. And I was quite slim at this time, so but similar weight now, but it doesn't look that bad. But if you've had the bloating and if you've had the SIBO, you'll know what it kind of feels like. It just, it's so uncomfortable and it pushes your diaphragm up and you can't really breathe. Oh, it's hard, nasty. Uh, you can also get diarrhea, constipation, or a mixture of the two. So it's like a change in your bowel habits. We can often get food intolerances. So reacting to multiple foods, trying to figure out what it is, can be a nightmare as well. Gas. So you can get the smelly gas, or it can just be the air. But they say that we fart about 30 times a day, but we, I don't really notice that. So when I had SIBO, for sure, I was quite gassy. And I could notice it within a couple of hours after eating something funky, I would get quite gassy. <laughs> Belching or burping, so when it's coming out the top end. So if you find like you're just constantly a little bit regurgitating after eating your meals. Abdominal pain or discomfort. So I definitely had the discomfort. I didn't have the pain so much. But some people can have just the abdominal pain and discomfort and not even the physical bloating. It's different for everyone. And then weight gain or weight loss. So I gained a ton of weight with SIBO. It was because partly because my body was so inflamed, but then also because I'd been so restricted for so long. So when I was down at this stage, I was down to kind of just eating chicken and eggs because these were the things that wouldn't make me bloat. And so that's kind of what I stuck to. And I messed around in my microbiome quite a lot and painted myself into a corner and it's taken some time to get back out. So there was that restriction with foods. So then when I fixed my SIBO, I went a bit crazy on all the food and I got stuck in this binge restrict cycle. So that was a big part of my weight gain. But some people lose weight. It's about 50-50. And losing weight can be just as frustrating as gaining weight. So testing. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of testing for SIBO because you can learn a lot by your symptoms. So when I take a, a new client in, I'll spend like an hour with them and going through everything in the body. So not just the digestive system, I'll go through the digestive system, the nervous system, the adrenal system, the immune system, all the things. And I put all these puzzle pieces together to figure out what's going on. But with SIBO, so this is one test that I do really recommend doing because I can tell that someone's tired by them like some adrenal support but if they're waking up at 3 a.m or if they got anxiety i don't really need a test for that but with SIBO the symptoms don't always match up with the kinds of bacteria using myself as an example so i had chronic constipation most of my life which usually goes with the methane SIBO but my methane was fine i had off the chart <laughs> literally off the chart hydrogen numbers so this is why SIBO testing is super important and it's really easy. So you can, all these, I've got some labs coming up and you can order these yourself. You can do it at home and then you get so much information from it. Not just the positive or negative, but you find out which kind of SIBO that you have and which part of your digestive system it's in. So there's different kinds. I prefer the lactulose breath test, which isn't lactose, it's lactulose. And this tends to be the substrate that is fermented the best. Then the next one after that is the glucose. The glucose gets absorbed very high up in the small intestine. So if your SIBO is in the distal part or the, the far away part of your small intestine, it might not catch it. And you can do both if you want to kind of get a full picture, but I recommend doing the lactulose ones there. So these are some labs. So SIBO test is my favorite lab. I came across them when I was doing my research when I had SIBO and I'm so grateful because they're still my favorite. I love them. They are based in Australia, but they will send kits out worldwide. And it's 225 Aussie dollars domestic or 245 Aussie dollars international. They're super cool and they're super friendly. And so Dr. Narala Jacobi, she's the one that founded SIBO test. So they're lovely. So clever. Direct Lab. So this is in the United States and that's their website. You can order it from there. It's US dollars 259. There's SIBO Canada. I love them as well. They're really sweet. 
and they also ship to the States, and that's Canadian dollars 210. And then for those of you in Europe, we have SIBO Lab. They don't actually have a website just yet, but if you use this email address, you can just email them. Oops, there's an L there. It's just info at SIBOLab.de. Sorry about that. Marie's really lovely. I speak to her all the time. Okay, so this is, just know that there's different ways to get your result. So this is my most effective way over the years of treating multiple people with SIBO. It works really, really well. So I'm going to give you all the different options and then I'm going to talk you through my favorite ones. So herbal antimicrobials. So this is my favorite route. It's the most, most enjoyable way and it doesn't hurt your, the rest of your body too much. There is the elemental diet. And I'm going to go through these one by one. There's antibiotics. And then there's SIBO freedom. <laughs> okay, so the herbal antimicrobials. And this, this is why it's important to do that SIBO test because different antimicrobials will work on the different kinds of SIBO. So if you have methane dominant SIBO, then you want to put a lot of focus on something called Alimax. So Alimax is a constituent of garlic. But if you know a little bit about SIBO already, you know that onions and garlic are a huge trigger. So that's due to the fructans. This Alimax product has the fructans taken away, so it won't aggravate the SIBO. So it's a really strong antimicrobial. And then for the hydrogen dominant SIBO guys, you want to focus on the berberine. And then there's other antimicrobials that are really good, like wormwood, cloves, oregano, thyme, and podarco. So those last two are strong antifungals as well, because if something's been bacterial for quite some time, then it's a chance that it goes into fungus, which is a bit gross. <laughs> so the elemental diet, um, it's very boring. It is effective. So it's about, I think your success rate, if you do it for two weeks, is about 75%. And then if you do it for three weeks, the success rate goes up to 85%. So it is very, very effective. But it's super tough mentally and emotionally. And I think I might be influenced by my own experience and what I've seen with clients that have done it themselves as well. Because you're so restricted for these two or three weeks, coming off it is really tricky. And there's a really good saying, like any fool can fast, but breaking the fast is what makes it. So what I see quite often is that people will do this elemental diet and do it really, really well. Because like, when you get in the groove, it's quite easy. But when you come off the elemental diet, because you haven't had that period of time to learn what foods your body likes, I see a lot of crashing and burning. So a lot of, I see a lot of binge eating because you've been so restricted for so long and you've got to work hard to break that cycle. And then also because your body hasn't had anything for so long, it can become a little bit more reactive. So it is effective. I do use it sometimes, but only in really extreme cases. I much prefer the herbal antimicrobials. And then we have the antibiotics. So as a naturopath, I prefer the natural route. As far as antibiotics go, these ones aren't the worst. So they tend to stay local to the digestive system. So they don't kind of annihilate everything, but if you think of your digestive system and your microbiome as a garden, and in this garden, you've got some good plants, but you've also got a lot of weeds. So I think the weeds are the SIBO. The quickest way to get rid of the weeds would just be to set your whole garden on fire. <laughs> Effective. So this is kind of like your antibiotics. But if you did like a little bit longer and not, even, not usually even that much longer, and selectively pull out your weeds, which is like your herbal antimicrobials. By the time you finish, you've got this garden ready to go with all your healthy plants. So that's kind of the difference between the herbs and the pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals set the whole thing on fire and then you haven't really got anything left behind after. So you've got to start really from scratch. And then if you just did a little bit longer and a little bit more selective, you have your beautiful healthy garden ready to go. Then we have SIBO Freedom, which is my baby. I do it as private one-on-one -on -one coaching and I do it as group coaching. I'm going to give you some more details on that all later. Okay, so food. Food is very important. So what is the purpose of the food and how long to do it for? 
so I am a big fan of the biphasic diet by Dr. Narala Jacobi. It's kind of like a combination of the FODMAP diet and the SIBO specific diet. So it's a lot more selective. It's very anti-inflammatory. So one reason this is better than say the FODMAP diet, because FODMAPs in case you don't know, are fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols, which is pretty much just big names for the different kinds of sugars in your different carbohydrates in your plant foods. So even though something might be low FODMAP, it doesn't necessarily make it healthy. A good example is white bread. So white bread is technically low FODMAP, but that would be very aggravating to your digestive tract. So while we're healing up your digestive tract, it's not just about killing the SIBO, it's making sure that everything else is working well as well. So this biphasic diet is anti-inflammatory, it starves the bacteria, so this is the purpose of it. And by taking away a lot of these triggers, like the wheat from the white bread, it gives your digestive system a chance to heal. So it's about regrowing your microvilli, it's about repairing the gut. It's really, really effective. How long to do it for is different for different people, but a lot of the time I get my clients doing it for at least six weeks. And I'm very big on expanding the diet back out as soon as possible, because then you start to heal exponentially. So me starting with my chicken and eggs, that's like if I tried to have anything else, it's just a poof. So I had to go very slowly with my reintroduction and I start doing that with my clients from the beginning. So we start with the basic foods and we kind of have that as the blueprint starting point because everybody's different, but the biphasic diet is good for a lot of people. And I kind of go from there. And Rebecca Coombs, she is amazing. So she also had SIBO herself, maybe about a year before me. And she is the author of the world's first SIBO cookbooks. So she's got lots of cookbooks. She's got ones um, for the Aussies. And then she's also brought out the US version. So everything in pounds and ounces and different ingredients from there. She also does meal plans. And she's got gazillions of recipes on her website. She's got a podcast as well. Super good source of information if you're stuck with what to eat. So then what? Because it's not just about killing the SIBO, it's fixing everything else as well. So how did the SIBO get there in the first place? There's a really good example, um, analogy someone said. So mosquitoes, mosquitoes are drawn to stagnant water, but they didn't make the water stagnant. So it's not just enough to blast away the mosquitoes, which could be the SIBO. You need to make sure that that water is flowing and clean again. Otherwise, the mosquitoes will just come back first chance that they get. So what happens once you've got rid of your SIBO? Must do the gut and microbiome restoration. Because if you don't, your relapse rate is going to be, tend to be very, very high. So if you're someone that has been through SIBO treatment and you manage to clear it, but then it comes back, you clear it, comes back, clear it, comes back, maybe this is where you need to put your focus. And to do this, we need things called motility agents. I'll explain these more in detail coming up. We need to repair a leaky gut. Leaky gut is, so in your so gut, I refer to with your digestive system. And then in your digestive system, we have these things called the tight junctions. They're like little teeth that fit together. So what should happen, so this is a mucous membrane. If you think about the inside of your mouth, that's a mucous membrane as well. And the junction should be tight enough that they only let through little things. So say, for example, when you break down your food, so say you break down your protein, you'll break it down into your individual amino acids and you'll break it down into your individual vitamins and minerals. So these are very, very tiny and they can just pass through. So it's permeable, which means things can kind of go backwards and forwards. But if the tight junctions become leaky, then you have leaky gut. And then things that, can meant, that are meant to stay in your digestive system can get through into your bloodstream. So say whole proteins instead of the amino acids. And this is a problem because then it can cause inflammation body-wide. And that can feel like the puffiness, that can feel like sore joints. And then also, if you have leaky gut, there's a big chance that you can have something called leaky brain. It doesn't mean that your brain is leaking out, but there is a gut-brain barrier. So if this barrier becomes leaky, then your brain can become inflamed. And this can show up as feeling depressed, or it can show up as feeling anxious, or it can show up as having brain fog. So all these things are not necessarily to do with your brain. It could be coming from your digestive system. Very important to fix it on. 
Microvilli. So these guys are super important. So in our small intestine, you might have heard that the surface area of your small intestine is the size of a tennis court, which is massive, amazing. And then the reason how you can get this much surface area in your little belly is because of these microvilli. So if you imagine seaweed and the fish coming through the seaweed and the seaweed's gonna clean the fish. This is kind of like your food swimming through and these villi and the microvilli on the villi they help to release brush border enzymes and the enzymes break down your food. So the better that you break down your food, the easier it is for you to absorb. So sometimes if someone's microvilli is all dead, then it's like the food swims past it and then you don't absorb the nutrition from your food. So you could have the best diet in the whole wide world, but if your digestive system isn't working the way that we want it, you can end up malnourished, which is really unfair. That was kind of like me doing all the right things, but still feeling a bit rubbish. Replenishing the nutrients. So you'll often find with SIBO that vitamin B12 and iron are low because this is the bacteria's favorite food. And then it's tricky. So then if your levels are low and you're supplementing orally, you're kind of nourishing yourself a bit, but you're also feeding the bacteria. B vitamins are commonly low as well. So it's about identifying what's low for yourself, which you can do through blood tests, but you can also learn a lot through symptoms. Like tingling in your hands and feet is often B vitamins. Feeling like that shortness of breath is often iron. Cramps in your legs is often magnesium. The body is amazing. You just gotta know how to listen. And then rebuilding the microbiome is super, 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 super important. So we've got seven different microbiomes in the body. When I go through the slides, I'm going to be talking about the microbiome in our large intestine. So it's all the little bugs that we want in there. There are some not so good ones too, and that's not always a problem. So it's not about eradicating all the bad ones. We just need the right balance. Just like teenagers. If, like you have, if you're at home with your teenagers, they tend to be a bit better behaved. If you leave them with an empty house, they're probably going to have a party. <laughs> Okay, the different motility agents. So motility is movement. So movement through your digestive tract. We want things to be moving through your digestive tract at the right rate. Digestive bitters are fantastic. So these, on our tongue, we've got different taste receptors. Anytime that we taste something bitter, it stimulates your liver and your gallbladder. And your liver and your gallbladder are going to help you to break down your fat because they release the bile. Just a little note on this one, there is another kind of SIBO called the hydrogen sulfide SIBO. So if you have hydrogen sulfide SIBO, then you want to kind of avoid the bitters because the hydrogen sulfide SIBO loves fat and they eat bile. So if you're kind of stimulating more, you could be making the hydrogen sulfide SIBO worse. Another reason for testing. Hydrogen sulfide SIBO, you'll often get that smelly gas, the rotten egg, rotten egg smelly gas. Ginger is fantastic. So ginger tea, chewing on fresh ginger, grated ginger in your food. Ginger helps with something called gastric emptying. So gastric is your stomach and we've got like a series of valves through our body. So we eat the food, goes through our esophagus. And then we have a valve from our esophagus into our stomach on the left-hand side. And then there's another valve from the stomach into the small intestine. And then there's another valve from the small intestine into the large intestine. So ginger helps with this emptying of the stomach into the small intestine. Because if that's not working so well, then your food can stay longer in the stomach than you want it to. And that can be a little bit fermenty. Sometimes you can get the reflux and the burping. It's not very comfortable. So love ginger. Anything with nausea, ginger is fantastic. And then Motilpro is a very common motility agent that's used. It's a product by a brand called Pure Encapsulations which is a great brand as FYI. They were recently bought out by Nestle and people are having a bit of a fit about that, but the ingredients are still super clean. So they don't have any nasty fillers in there. So it's, they're a great brand. And repairing the sticky gut. So part of the biphasic diet by removing all these different irritants, that's gonna do some benefit for healing the gut. And then you also have other nutrients that help. So L-glutamine is one. DGL is deglycerinized licorice. And then we have marshmallow, meat, and bone broth. <laughs> Sounds about it as a gecko. 
um, but it's important to find out the one that you need because they're not all appropriate for everyone. So as an example, if someone has very leaky gut and they go in too strong with the L-glutamine, then you can feel the brain fog, you can feel the itchy skin. It's, it's a bit of a process. Restoring your microvilli. So those little things that help you to break down your food, your digestive enzymes, your brush border enzymes. So avoiding the trigger foods and then using some of those nutrients from before. And then I talked about this a little bit already. So replenishing the nutrients, iron, B12, B complex, and sometimes multis. Like you don't absorb that much from a multivitamin. But if someone is super depleted, then I do consider them because it can just be like that extra little bit that helps. Rebuilding the microbiome, super, super important. And prebiotics are actually more important than your probiotics. So it's a bit of a myth that your probiotics will repopulate your gut. And you need to find the right probiotic for what you need. For example, there's certain strains that help with constipation. There's certain strains that help with diarrhea. Jason Horolak, huge fan of Jason Horolak. He's like a microbiome guru. And he uses the example of dogs. So say you have your different kinds of dogs and you have your different kinds of probiotics, your different strains. So it's not just enough to get the right species. So a dog would be the species. And then as exactly the probiotics, so your lactobacilli would be a species. But then you need the right strain of the right species. Lactobacillus rhamnosus, lactobacilli acidophilus. There's different ones that do different things. So great aunt Gertrude that lives in an apartment building wouldn't be such an idea, a good idea for her to get a Great Dane. Maybe more of a Shih Tzu. And then a farm dog. It wouldn't be so good to have a Shih Tzu. So maybe you want to board a Collie. So you're finding the right strain of the right probiotic to help with your symptoms. You can also, there's another test called U-Biome, which you can order online as well. It's from the States. And this will show you what's happening with your microbiome. It's a really great test. And it shows you in percentages so whereas on a traditional complete digestive stool analysis, it will show you like your lactobacilli plus plus or your bifidobacterium plus 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 or maybe no pluses, but it doesn't show you the percentage and it doesn't show you in relation to everything else because it's like a beautiful little rainforest in there and everything works together. It's not just enough to have eight beautiful ferns. You need some ferns, you need some grass, you need some trees. And then everything starts to self-regulate and works by itself. So prebiotics. So prebiotics are like nourishing the soil so that when you do put the probiotics in there, the probiotics can last. Otherwise, they'll tend to just pass through your system within three or four days. So as long as you, if you take it every day, you'll get the benefit, but they'll never really stick around. <sighs> so now we come to SIBO freedom. I love it. In case you can't tell. <laughs> so I got the, I ran a competition on Instagram about um, a name for my SIBO programs. So I had solved your SIBO before. And then a lovely little girl named Karen came up with the name SIBO Freedom. And it just, it fits so well. Love it. SIBO Freedom. So what does SIBO Freedom do? Gets rid of SIBO. It clears out other pathogens. So pathogens are the bad guys. So sometimes it's not just about the SIBO. And if something has been funky in your digestive system for a little while, like I mentioned with the fungal, so sometimes candida can be overgrown as well. Sometimes you can pick up some parasites. <laughs> I live in Bali and they say that 90% of people living in Indonesia have parasites. Oh, I've had them myself. Nasty little things. I had the really itchy skin from parasites. And then they say around full moon, if you get really weird around full moon, it could be from parasites too. So the word luna, lunatic, crazy people. Uh, also itchy bum at nighttime. So the parasites or worms lay their eggs at nighttime. So if you get any of those symptoms, chances are you got some parasites. Boost digestion. So back with my mosquito example, it's not just enough to clear out the SIBO. We need to figure out why you got SIBO in the first place and restore those mechanisms so that it doesn't come back. It heals the gut and the microbiome. 
resolves food intolerances. Food intolerances are so annoying and people don't always understand unless they've been through it themselves. So if you've got multiple food intolerances, I'm so sorry. I've, I had them myself. It was, I developed such fear of food. I got really obsessive with food. I got freaked out. I remember there was one time uh, someone gave me a cup of tea and I tasted some sugar in it. And I literally spat it out into the cup and I was mortified because that's so, that's really rude. So I got, that, that's how freaked out I was by food. And I remember I had gone out to lunch with someone and he was questioning if I had a good relationship with food. I was like, yeah, I'm totally fine. Because I wanted to pretend that I was normal. I didn't want people to know that I was broken. And so I'd eaten my food that had made me feel good. It was like this delicious, um, what was it? Was it? steak and salad and some veggies but I left the bowl of potatoes because I knew that they were just a nightmare for me and this person was like why, why aren't you eating your potatoes are you have you got a weird relationship with food or something and then just to show that I was normal I went and ate the potato and then I suffered for it after it was like so bloated so much pain and I was tired so people don't really get it, especially with gluten. They think that it's the latest fad and you're jumping on the bandwagon and you'll get the eye rolls. So, yeah, I talk about this in the Zebra Freedom as well, like how to navigate social situations because it's stressful. In Sasebo Freedom, I'm big on expanding out the foods as quickly as possible. And then when you do it in a proper way, it can be relatively simple. It gives you your life back. Yay, SIBO freedom. So how do we get rid of the SIBO? So I, most of the time, it's very individual, but most of the time I will use the biphasic diet as a starting point. So that helps to starve the bacteria. And then I use different antimicrobials specific to the person to kill the bacteria. And then other pathogens. So if there's some um, candida or if there's parasites, I'll put, because you're going to all this trouble anyway, so I'll just cover some bases if there's if the person presenting with signs and symptoms of something else going on. So there's other different antimicrobials like I mentioned before. Boost the digestive system. So it depends on the person, which I can tell a lot through questioning in my intake forms. Is the stomach acid too low? Is the migrating motor complex needing some help? How's the vagal nerve tone? What's going on with the ileocecal valve? Gastric emptying? Is it um, some liver support? All the different things that we need to identify for the person. What's allowed the SIBO to get there? It heals the gut and the microbiome. So as I've been going mentioned many times it's, it's not just about clearing the SIBO you need to restore the mechanisms as well and a big 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 part of that is restoring the microbiome because then your digestive system becomes a lot more self-functioning and your tolerance to different foods goes up as well your energy goes up we produce like up to 85 percent of our serotonin in the digestive system serotonin is our happiness hormone it's our motivational hormone it's our self-confidence hormone also helps to regulate our circadian rhythm, which is a sleep-wake cycle. Um, about 70% of our immune system is located in and around the digestive system. So super important to look after our gut. Resolves the food intolerances. So I have like a bit of an approach with reintroduction of the foods, which ones to try first, in which quantities, which ones are the least likely to cause reactions, which ones to maybe save till you've healed a little bit more, all these different things. So stronger digestion equals better digestion equals greater tolerance to foods equals the food freedom. So I was recently asked what life is like after SIBO. I just got back from three weeks away up the coast. I went surfing with my lovely little Buddha, my little dog, and I was away for three weeks. And the Airbnb that I was staying in didn't have a kitchen. Usually, as an old person in times of SIBO days, I would never, ever, ever have done that. So if I didn't have complete control over my food, I freaked out because I didn't know what was in it. Is it going to give me symptoms? Am I going to get bloated? Am I going to get tired? Am I going to be in bed for two days? And then I was away for three weeks and I had such a wonderful time. So I was totally free. I was able to eat off any menu that I wanted. I wasn't perfect. And there were days <laughs> I was doing like a surf work trip. So I wanted to go and be more proactive with work and it was like the first week I was like acting like I was on total holiday I had you know, had some pizza I had some bintangs for the first time in my life and my digestive system was fine 
And it's knowing that I could eat these different things and tomorrow I'm still going to have energy and tomorrow I'm still going to have a clear brain and I'm not going to be bloated. I'm not going to be constipated again. I'm not going to have sore joints again. I'm not going to be all puffy again. <sighs> it is such a relief and a release. And it's like the freedom. Again, that people, if they haven't had these food intolerances, they probably won't be able to relate to that. But there's so much freedom in being able to eat off a menu and being able to eat what people give you. And I love it. For me and my SIBO. So this is how I felt when I had SIBO. So it doesn't look that bad, but again, if you've, if you've felt it, you'll know what this is like. It's after eating, I can't remember what I ate then, but it wasn't anything bad. Like I'm, I'm a naturopath, I eat healthy, but it was just sore and it puffed out. So that was a puffed out tummy for me. So before I got SIBO, I was super fit. So this is when I was teaching yoga and I was like surfing every day. I had a little six pack most of the time, unless I was bloated. So this is like the puffy out, sore, uncomfortable. <laughs> I was, I felt like my body was broken. And so I was very embarrassed about that. And I was very ashamed of my body. I got really depressed. I felt like I was a prisoner in my own body. So I was a slave to my food choices. I was a slave to having control over my food. I felt like I was a prisoner in my home because I didn't want to socialize very much because I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed about going to yoga because yoga clothes are tight fitting. So I didn't want anyone to see my belly. I didn't want to go surfing in my bikini. So I started surfing less. I avoided going out to dinner with friends. Like Bali is super social and everyone goes out to dinner all the time. And I would just decline, 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 decline because it would cause me so much stress and anxiety that it just wasn't worth it for me. So I spent so much time by myself in my house, feeling very isolated and alone. I felt like my life was over. So <laughs> one of the mistakes I made was I got into those Facebook groups. So when I got the diagnosis, I just wanted to consume information about, about SIBO. And the Facebook groups, people aren't working with professionals. So there's so much information out there and SIBO is different for almost everybody. So what helps Susie isn't gonna help Jane, isn't necessarily gonna help Harry. And these people in these groups just weren't getting better. And they were sick for years and years and years and years and years and years. And, years. and I was like, oh my gosh, my life is over. I'm never going to get better. Not true. So I did that for a little while. And I also read lots of articles. And then I booked myself in with Jason Horlack. Because even though I was a naturopath and even though I had so much knowledge of the body, I wanted to speak to someone that was an expert in what I got. So he was a couple of steps ahead of me. So I had a session with him. I crossed a whole bunch of wires, came up with a plan confirmed a lot of things that I was going to be doing and it took so much of the elbow overwhelm out. So highly, highly, highly recommend working with a practitioner. Like I've got so much information on my Instagram page. I post there almost every day. I've got information on my website. But if you, if you tried that and you're not winning, it's probably time to work with a professional that knows what, what you're doing, what you're going through and what you're dealing with. And yeah, so much overwhelmed because there's different kinds, there's different experts out there with different advice. And it's not necessarily that one is right and one is wrong, but if you try and follow everyone's advice, you're going to be left eating nothing. <laughs> All right, so how I feel now, I feel free. I feel light. Uh, I don't feel so stressed. I don't get anxiety around food. I feel at ease. I feel strong again. Like I lost so much muscle tone and I lost, I, got, I felt really weak when I had the SIBO. I feel confident. I feel energetic and I feel very, very grateful. So I appreciate my food so much. I appreciate cooking again. I appreciate being able to go out with my friends for dinner. It's awesome. It's really, really good. So SIBO Freedom, let's go through the program specifics and how it can help you overcome your SIBO. So I do this as an online group coaching program. I also do private one-on-one -on -one work as well, but this is about the group coaching program. So it's a 12-week online group coaching program and we have a live session over Zoom each week. And then I give you the last week of the month to go away and integrate. And all sessions are online via Zoom. Everything will be recorded and uploaded to our private Facebook group. And then I'll also be in the group answering questions most days. I love the group settings. I've done a couple of groups now. And so with the private one-on-ones, I, I love them as, I, I, I love my work. So with my private one-on-ones, we get to 
go really, really deep in the nitty gritty and very specific. So if you have a quite a tricky case and maybe you have multiple things going on, so say you've got SIBO and endometriosis and Hashimoto's and you've been trying for a little while, I might recommend doing the private one-on-ones. But in the group coaching program, so it's not just me supporting you, you guys support each other. It's really lovely. I love the dynamic and people are sharing their recipes and meal inspo and cheering each other on. It's, it's beautiful. I'm so happy with it. And then everyone is on the same time schedule. So you're going through it all together. So you're doing it with people that are going through what you're going through as well. I individual, it's a group coaching program, but I still individualize it. So when you do your SIBO test, you'll get your results back. So it tends to fall in one of four categories. There's methane dominant SIBO with constipation, methane dominant SIBO with diarrhea, it does happen. And then you get your hydrogen dominant SIBO with constipation, hydrogen dominant SIBO with diarrhea. That's probably like the most common. And then so I do that from there. And then based on the questions that I ask you, I add in extra things as well, depending on where you need the support. So are you showing signs of low stomach acid? I will help you there. If you are stressed as well, because stress can slow down the healing, then I will support that part. If you are getting nauseous all the time, then we might look at liver support. There's different parts. And so I design the protocols that way. So even though it's a group, you still get individualized treatment. And then as your little naturopath, I take care of all product sourcing and delivery. So I've got suppliers all over the world. So depending on where you're living, I choose the wine closest to you and then I get them delivered within a day or two. Pretty cool. And the topics that we cover, so I take you through week by week what things to kind of navigate through. I know because I've been doing it for so long, I know what's going to come up when and how to help you through it in the smoothest way possible. And then also I'm so big on education so that if I teach you all these things, then you can apply that knowledge and then by the end of the program, you won't need me. So it's teaching you how to care for yourself, which is way more empowering than making you come see me every week and telling you what to do. So when you learn the concepts, then you can apply the knowledge. So we go through nutrition and mindset, so important, movement or exercise, stress management, and the underlying causes. So the different stages of treatment. So this can be with zero freedom, it can be with private online coaching, it can be if you're doing it yourself, these are things to kind of focus on. It's a two, it tends to be a two-stage approach. So stage one is removing. So weeks one to six, you're clearing out your SIBO, eliminating trigger foods, bringing in anti-inflammatory foods to get you that nutrition back, and using the specific antimicrobials to you. Stage two is the repairing and the restoring. So weeks seven to 12. So once you've cleared your SIBO, and sometimes people need more than one round, do know that, but even if you do need more than one round, you need to give your body a break in between. Because a lot of people get stuck in this kill, 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 and they do the antimicrobials for weeks, months at a time. And herbs are natural, but you're not to use them willy nilly because they can deplete some of your good guys in your large intestine. A good example is oregano. So it's super effective and super great for killing SIBO, but it's not specific just to SIBO. So it can also kill off your good bacteria in your large intestine. So being careful with that one. And so then we want to rebuild the digestive system. So broadening the diet back out, the gut repair, like I talked about before, and then the microbiome restoration. The previous participants, it's always nice to know that other people have done it as well and their experience of it. This is Tammy. So this, this will be recorded, so you can find it on my channels from there, so maybe you can read it from there. But Tammy had a very similar story to mine. So she found me on Instagram, really connected. It was like a light bulb went off. And she did absolutely amazingly well. I loved her energy and her mindset with it. And she just, it's so beautiful. And so the results that she got were like the decreased brain fog. She feels more confident than ever. She was saying how before doing the program, it was like she was just kind of getting through life. And now she feels like she's living life to the full. So she's wearing the, she's always very small anyway, but now that her bloating has gone down, she's got that self-confidence to wear any clothes that she likes again, which is massive. So I know that I got really sad when I had Zebo like going through my wardrobe and I had these nice clothes and I couldn't wear them because I just felt so fat and uncomfortable. So yeah, so that's Tammy. And this was someone named Kirsten. So Kirsten, it turned out she didn't actually have SIBO, 
but taking her to the program, we rebalanced out her digestive system, cleared out the things that were causing the issue, put the good things back in, and a lot of information about nutrition. So Kirsten never had an issue with weight, so she'd never had to really learn the tools about what to eat and how much to eat. So we spent a lot of time kind of going through that with her, and now she had learned what foods make her body feel better, not just with the digestive system, but in terms of energy and brain function and sleep. Pretty cool. And then this was a beautiful girl named Alina. So she was in the wonky time zone. She, she was waking up at 3 a.m. to join our live sessions, even though they were recorded after. Her commitment was just it was absolutely beautiful. Love her pieces. So she had a really great time with clearing out her fever and healing her digestive system as well. So then it comes down to how much for fever freedom. So I want you to think about the cost versus the value. They're very different things. So working with me is an investment in your life, but I can give you so much value. I love, 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 love it. It's, with my life, I only really, Marie Kondo is going through Netflix at the moment, like the, the sparking joy. So I do things that make me feel good. And it makes me feel really, really good to help other people fix their fibo because I know what it feels like and I know how rubbish it is to live with fibo. It's not really living, it's kind of just existing. So the investment... Um, the next group coaching program is going to kick off on Monday, the 4th of March, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then just to say, so it's a one-off payment of $870. So that's for the full three months of coaching. And I'll go through what's included in a little bit. But just to say, if you missed this one, go to my website and check out my Work With Me page. So I'll be offering this maybe three times a year. And then if you prefer the more intimate setting, I do do the private one-on-one -on -one coaching as well, which is $670 per month for three months. And I do three months because it takes that long to change everything and turn everything around with your digestive system. So the clearing out, the repairing, and the restoring. And then testing and supplements aren't included. And it's not just the zebra that you lose, it's the life that you gain. So thinking about your ideal life. There's a wonderful saying like health is the ability to live your dreams, to live the life of your dreams. But I change that. I say it's the ability to enjoy the life of your dreams. Because when I got Zebra, I was still living in Bali. So that was 2016, so three, three and a bit years ago now. So I was still living in Bali. So I had, the, I had the dream life. I could surf, I could do yoga, I could do this, but I just wasn't enjoying it because I felt like a prisoner in my own body. I felt like a prisoner in my own home. So I feel that when you have a nice, functioning, healthy body, physically, mentally, and emotionally, then you can enjoy the life of your dreams. So if you were to think about your ideal life, like what would it feel like to wake up knowing that you can eat whatever you like? What would it feel like to go to bed not floated? Would you be more relaxed and intimate with your partner? Or if you don't have a partner, would you have that self-confidence to go dating again? What would it be like to have the physical energy to play sports again or be active again? What would it be like to have a clear functioning brain so that you can be more productive in your business or productive in your hobbies and connecting with others? All those different things. So think about your ideal life and then think about steps to get there. Like it might be super freedom, it might be something else. But yeah, health is the ability to enjoy the life of your dreams. Of course, so FAQs and Q&A. So I had some questions sent through. I will open up that one. So if anyone's got any questions, you can just type them in there. And the ones that I had, I'll go through those. So a big one that I get is how I make SIBO freedom individual. <laughs> so I get everybody to fill in an intake form for me, which is very in-depth. So it's not just about the digestive system. I want to know what's going on with your sleep, with your energy, with your poo, with your stress levels, with your hormones, with your menstrual cycle if you're a girl, what's going on with your thyroid, all these different things. And then I highly encourage the SIBO test. So that will tell me what kind of SIBO that you have, and I can tailor the protocol to that. So that's with the group coaching. If it's on the individual, and then I do an initial intake session, which is a full hour. And we like really dive deep into everything. So that's how I do that. 
And then what if you can't make the live sessions? Everything is recorded. So each time we'll have the session on Zoom and that's automatically recorded. And then I upload that into our private Facebook group. So that, and that will be there forever. So once you're in the group, it's a closed group. So you can stay in there and the information will be there for you always. Shot. Ding, ding, ding. I'd like you to refer to your friend who's been suffering from SIBO for years and been to so many naturopaths and it's not my special area to not come to help you. Do you offer payment plans? I tend not to um, because it's a, it's a commitment. It's a financial commitment, but it's also a mental and emotional commitment. And I find when I get my clients to show up with this investment, then the results are better. So they are more accountable. They are invested in their own health. So in special cases, I do. Maybe if she wants to have a chat with me, we'll see what we can do from there. But as a general rule, I don't. So $870, you can do it in installments, but the final payment will be due before the program starts. Thanks, Bronte. You're amazing. I love Sibo. Cool. So what else did I have? Um, are supplements included? No, they're not. But um, I take care of all sourcing and delivery. So you don't need to go running around your local health food stores or pharmacies trying to find the products. I take care of all that and I pay for the shipping. So it's no extra cost to you for me to do that for you. So all you need to do is listen to what I tell you to do and you'll get better. Um, ileocecal valve. Someone asked me to talk a little bit about the ileocecal valve. This is a little thing between your belly button and your right hip. So if you get like, I used to get this. So if you get like cramping in that area, then it can be something to do with the ileocecal valve. So ileocecal valve is when the small intestine opens up into the large intestine. Sometimes it can get stuck shut and sometimes it can get stuck open. If it gets stuck shut, then this person will often have constipation. If it gets stuck open, they can often experience diarrhea. There is an ileocecal valve massage manipulation, and you can find the videos on YouTube about it. But it's super hard to get the angle right doing it yourself. So I often recommend chiropractors. So chiropractors are good with this one, and they can help to open it up. And alcohol actually relaxes the ileocecal valve. So if you've, <laughs> if you've noticed that you had a night on the town and then you had a really big poo the day after, it's probably because this alcohol has relaxed your ileocecal valve. And then different things like the motility agents that I talked about before, these can help with that. And then as your digestive system comes back into balance and we reduce the inflammation, then things naturally start working as they should as well. But sometimes it can be a physical thing that needs the physical manipulation, which you can get with a chiropractor. So maybe um, instead of just trying one, maybe contact your different chiropractors in your area first say, are you familiar with the ileocecal valve manipulation? You can save you a whole bunch of time. And when I have people on Zafaxanin, do I have them eat foods to encourage the SIBO for the first week so the bugs are hungry and then go low FODMAP? I don't do that. So I don't, um, so part, some people say that you need to feed the bacteria at the same time as killing them, otherwise they're just going to hiding. Pretty much though, if you're having symptoms, the bacteria are happy. So if you're still having bloating, then the bacteria are alive and well and you can kill them. I do sometimes introduce biofilm disruptors. So if the bacteria, bacteria are so clever and they don't want to die because you're a wonderful host. So if the bacteria are in there and they've been there for a little while, they can develop this little house called like a biofilm. And so then the antimicrobials don't always get through the biofilm. But then you get biofilm disruptors, like say seropeptidase is one. And it comes in, it pierces holes in the biofilm. And then your antimicrobials can get in there better. So you can kill them. But I don't um, subscribe to that one. Cool. So those are those questions there. And the program is live now. So you can go to my website, which is kirstenswales.com forward slash SIBO freedom. And my groups are kept at 20. So it's nice and intimate and I can keep a handle on everyone and still give individual care at the same time as you guys receiving the benefit of getting the support from everybody else. Yeah. 
So if you're joining after the live and you have any questions, you can just email me. So this is where you can find me. My email address is kirsten at kirstensales.com. I've got inquiry forms on my website. I'm super active on Instagram. So Kirsten Sales Naturopath, you can DM me there and I've got lots of information as well. Yes. So that is my presentation on SIBO freedom. So it's getting the freedom from digestive issues. It's getting the freedom from food intolerances. It's getting the freedom from the fear of food. This is really, really, really common. So a lot of people don't go out to restaurants, myself included. A lot of people stop traveling because they're scared of food. <sighs> and it's, it's completely understandable because if we eat food and we have a negative reaction, then we start to get a negative relationship with food. So I bring it back to the positive reinforcement and like reintroducing things very slowly and methodical so you start to get a positive reinforcement again. And over time, it gets to that point where you don't even think about it. And that's when you know like the true healing has happened. When uh, you think, oh, it's been weeks since I've been bloated. Huh. Like, oh, it's been weeks since I've had that brain fog. My brain is so sharp. It's when you forget about the symptoms that you know that you've got the freedom from it. And it's totally, totally possible. You just got to find the right way for you. Cool. So thank you so much for joining me. And thank you so much for watching. And lots of love from me to you. If you need any help, give me a shout. It's totally worth working with, investing in yourself and working with a professional. Who is that? You are so welcome, lovely. So welcome. Okay, I'll see you very soon. Find me on Instagram, on my website, whatever you like. Have a beautiful day wherever you are. And you're amazing. Lots of love for me to you. <laughs>